Well, good morning and welcome back to the Recycled Cottage and Garden. And today we're going to finish up with the canning that we did yesterday. So we have eight jars of potatoes and they are now ready to be moved. They've all sealed. All you do is just kind of press down on the, the top just lightly. Um, and if there's any give to it, if one didn't seal, occasionally that happens for, you know, there might have been a bit of food under the rim. Anything can happen. If you have some that didn't seal, one or, it's usually one. I've never had more than one in a batch. Um, you can put it in the refrigerator and use it soon. The other option is you can recan it. If you're pressure canning, you may not want to do that because, as you can tell, it's a long process. Um, I've gotten my pans, my canning pot, the lid. Everything has been cleaned. The, uh, the rubber ring I take out, I wash that and rinse that as well. Make sure you rinse everything real well. And then what we need to do now is wash our jars and the rings and a lot of times these are on really tight I just have a, about a, a half a sink here of um, soapy water just regular dish soap and I start by taking rings off the ones that they'll come off of some of my rings are a little old and they have a little bit of rust on them Um, there's not really a way around that that I know of. So here's what I do for the ones that don't. If you have a, a jar, one of those uh, grabby kind of things that you just put over the jar and twist, it helps you hang on to it really tight, you can do that. I've shown you this before in the tool section. This is really cool. It fits both sizes of jar lids. You just press it down on it. And usually it will come loose sometimes it doesn't um, I think I have see this one came off real easy and then you just pop it out come on there we go I think where I have the problem here is that my water is so full of minerals that even though I do the vinegar the uh, mineral content, I think, adds to the problem. Okay, there's it. So I have one more. Let me give it another try. My hands are not as strong as they used to be either. No. Okay. So if you get one that you can't open, run some warm water. Mine's already hot because I filled the sink with soapy dish water. And you can turn them a little bit. You'll notice that my jars are nice and clean. They don't have any residue on the outside. The reason for that is because I added that vinegar into the... Uh, into the pot. If I hadn't done that, and one time I forgot, here, if I hadn't done that, um, they would have had a white film on them from the minerals in the water. So what I do at this point, first of all, I wash the rings. I have a little scrubby sponge that I use for a lot of stuff. And I wash the rings, especially the insides. The outsides are pretty clean and soak in here for a minute. It's pretty much all I need. Yeah, I can tell that one that's stuck is an older ring. I might go ahead and throw that one out. Every now and again, you do have to get new rings because they do get rusty and they will stick. I have had two in my many years of canning 
that I actually had to uh, use a pair of um, wire cutters and cut the thing off. They're very thin, so it's very easy. Now, I don't fill my sink up all the way. It only goes up about halfway the height of the jar. And I just set them in here, just so they're down here. Okay, and then all I do is wash off the top of the rim and you wanna go around the rings on it, the glass ring threads. And then you want to rinse it with water. That's it. That's that's all you have to do at this point. You just want to make sure there is no uh, rustiness from the rings. And I have a little bit of that. I don't know. Can you see that? There's a little bit of rustiness from the ring because it was an older one. So I want to get as much of that off as I can. It's not really going to go through, but I don't like the looks of it. That's just me. But definitely you want to get really good around the edge of the jar. And that's to make sure that there's no food particle sitting on it. Uh, might be minuscule and you wouldn't see it. But if you leave it on there, it can go nasty over time, sitting in your pantry, and then your jar lid will loosen because of the bacteria growth on the outside. It is possible. It's rarely anything like that happens, but, oops, that one still is on there, okay. Um, I'm not paying attention, I still have one with a ring on there in there. That's all right. All right, let's see. Now that it's wet, let's see if it'll come off. My hands are wet too. Let me see. Oh, I'll just use this. This will be fine. Just got to get a grab on it. Yeah, there it goes. Okay. You do not want to leave your rings on your jars. I have seen some people online that do. You don't want to do that. Reason being, it can create a false seal. If it didn't seal properly, what can happen is that it will unseal itself while it's under the ring, but you won't notice it because that ring is tight on there. Um, I've seen some people do this. I, I don't know why they do it. It's not recommended by anyone with any knowledge. Certainly not by the FDA. Um, oh, here we go. See, I had it under warm water. It was just enough to loosen it. Most of the time, that's what you get. It just needs to be, and it's not rusty. I must have had a little minerals in there. Okay, as long as it's not rusty, I'll go ahead and keep it. You can't really put any lubrication under there because that can interfere, interfere with the seal of your jar. So you don't want to do that. Okay, now, the last step, well, almost the last step. The last step I'm going to show you anyway is I dry off the, the lids of the jars, the tops of them, and I just let them sit here till they're dry all the way. Um, but then I use a marker and I write on them the date. Usually I just do the month and year. You can put the whole date if you want to, that's fine. Whatever you're comfortable with, but definitely the month and year. And write on it what it is. Now this obviously to me looks like potatoes. But I'll write it on there because what if I decide, and I know I'm not in the camera, 
what if I decide to can pineapple chunks? Maybe I get a good deal on pineapple and I'm going to recan them so they'll last longer and taste better than if you leave them in the metal can. I've done that. Well, the size that I cut these potatoes and the yellowy color that they are because they're russets and through the canning process, they are almost the same color as what in size and shape as what pineapple chunks might be. So if you have any question at all, write on it what it is. Um, let me pull one that I have and I'll show you what I do. Hang on a second. <laughs> Gotta get to the pantry. So this was a jar of tomatoes that I did uh, last year in September when I had all those tomatoes that I bought. And there, there we go. Um, hopefully that's not backwards. It says Tom, short for tomato, puree 921. And that's all I need on it. And this was one of the really weird shaped jars that I found at a thrift store somewhere. I'm not sure why, but it works. It's a it's a pint, but it's kind of a cool looking jar. Anyway, that's how I label mine. I keep it simple. Um, I don't pay any attention to the lines on the jar if they have them. I'm usually writing, you know, a bunch of them at once. And if I'm doing that, I don't want to deal with having to fill it into the line. Now I do use a Sharpie marker because that will stay. Um, and I like, let's see, let me move you just a second, I'll pull it out. I use the Sharpie marker this size. The not quite, not the fine point, but not the great big broad one either. It's got a fine enough point that you can write nicely on there. The lids have enough room. The fine point I find, I, can, I personally can't see it. I got 63 year old eyes and I have to wear reading glasses to read pretty much anything or to look at the computer and read anything. So I use the little bit bigger Sharpie. Um, you can do as you choose. If you wanna make labels, go ahead. Um, I'm not into labels much. It's just an extra expense I don't need to spend. Um, and I, and you don't save your lids. When you open it and use the contents, you do not save these lids. These are not reusable, not for canning. If you, if you can get them nice and clean, you can use them for dry goods storage, and that's fine. Um, but these lids, you don't want to do that. One thing I did want to show you, if you can see this one, let's see if it'll show up. The water level is a little below the potatoes. For whatever reason, I either didn't get enough uh, of the air bubbles out, probably is the problem. It's not really a problem. Um, the rest of them all look great. Um, but when the water level is below the top of the potatoes, you may get, a, depending on how quickly you use them, you may get a few on the top that will turn brownish or blackish. There's nothing wrong with them. It's just an oxidation from the, the not being in the water. I usually throw those out because they just look ugly. But they're not bad. They're, they're, there's no bacteria in there. The amount of pressure for the amount of time that they've been in the canner kills any bacteria. 
Um, this is why you want to make sure your jars are clean, your lids are have been in the hot water. You don't have to, I had mine kind of simmering. That's just old school method. They say you don't have to do that anymore. That's fine. You can just use really hot water to sit them in. You want to clean your rims with that vinegar. All of this is help helps to make sure that you don't have any bacteria that's going to get in there and ruin all this work in your food. This is food security here. Um, I'm not going to show canning potatoes again since this series was pretty, pretty thorough. Um, however, I do have 20 more pounds of potatoes to go through because I've gotten uh, two weeks in a row I got potatoes on sale. 97 cents for a 10 pound bag. That's really, really cheap for here. So I will be canning more potatoes. Uh, I do still have some. One of the reasons I do the dates, when I line mine up in my pantry, I put likes together, like all the potatoes are together. And it's a little bit of work when you can more stuff because, and let me move over here. I think this will look a little better than me bending over there. There we go. Oh, that looks better. Oh, my water bucket. Um, yeah, I shift my canned goods by date. Oldest ones where I can get to them first. However you want to do that is fine. way I do mine is front to back, left to right. So the oldest one is going to be the farthest left, the farthest in front. And I, I just take the time to shift them when I add to it, um, if, unless I run out of room and have to go to a totally different shelf. Um, but remember where your oldest ones are. You want to use your oldest ones first. Now, time limits on canned food. Well, people will debate that one. Uh, most people used to can so that they had their garden produce ready to be used for the winter. So by the next summer, they were replacing all of that because they'd eaten it all. They were larger families years ago, uh, especially if they lived on a, a farm or a homestead type situation. They'd have a lot more produce. And with children or extended family members, they were feeding. These days, when it's maybe two people, maybe a small family of four, um, that's kind of the norm, I think, although I have seen larger families. Um, that's, you know, just not, we don't necessarily need all that. What I'm doing with my canning, because there's only me, and I have a couple of friends that I will definitely give food to, um, you know, if they need it. I have no problem doing that. That's one of the reasons I do this. I figure if everything goes to hell in a handbasket and there's no food in the grocery store, I have enough dry beans, dry rice, potato flakes, all that kind of weird stuff, and canned vegetables that I can throw together a soup in no time in, a, in my huge pot that's almost as big as the uh, canning pot. And I can feed everybody in this building. There are 28 people in this building. I can feed all of them off of one pot of soup. So, you know, nobody's going to go hungry. That's something I intend to do. We have a community room kitchen. It's fully, you know, stove, refrigerator, freezer, dishwasher even. We don't have dishwashers in here, but they have one in there. Um... That I fully intend to do that if it's necessary. If not, I'll eventually use it all. The dry goods are not going to go bad. Beans never go bad. You know, rice, if it's white rice or like I buy minute rice because regular rice doesn't cook well here unless you're putting it in a pressure cooker. Um, beans you have to put in a pressure cooker uh, if they're dry beans. That's why I sometimes will can, if I have room in the in the canner, and it's going for about the same amount of time, 
I'll do dry beans with water in in a, a jar and put it in there to fill up the, the canner. That way I've got beans ready to go. I open them up, they're cooked, they're ready. I just add them whatever, to a whatever I want. Okay, back to organizing your jars. You want your oldest jars first, so you use those up first. Um, oh, and then we went to how good are they for? I think the FDA says maximum like three years depending on what it is okay if you want to go by that and that makes you feel comfortable you go right ahead if you're like me and you want to push that envelope because you know that grandma can stuff in water bath only because that's all she had and the be green beans which are low acid which should be pressure canned were still good 10 years later although they weren't quite as green anymore and nobody got sick off of eating them, it's your choice. You decide what you want to do. It is not FDA approved to keep them past a certain date. I don't even remember. I think it's like three to five years, maybe depending on what kind of food it is. I will tell you that fruit goes off quicker. So you want to try and use your fruit within one to two years. One year preferably. A lot of the reason for that isn't that the fruit is bad. It just turns brown or turns a funky color. It's not bad. There's no mold in there. There's no, no bacteria uh, growing in there. It, you're just, it falls apart. It's mush. It's not really usable for much of anything unless you're going to make a smoothie. And sometimes it can get a little bit of an off flavor if you've added citric acid to it and it's gotten too old. I will say that about the fruit. So I would recommend using your fruit within one to two years. Keep an eye on them. Check them. And you should check your jars maybe once every six months just to make sure that nothing's come loose because sometimes that can happen over time. You want to keep them stored in a cool dark, dry place. Do not keep them in a cabinet above your refrigerator. Refrigerators put off a lot of heat. That's why cats like to lay on the top of them. Do not keep them next in a cupboard next to your dishwasher. That's a lot of heat coming off of there. I don't care what kind of insulation they got around it. Don't keep it in a cabinet near your stove. There's a lot of heat coming off. In a kitchen, Specifically, unless you have cupboards further away from appliances, a kitchen is not a really good place to store canned goods, uh, your own canned goods. Um, if you have a pantry that you kind of a walk into pantry, that's probably far enough away from um, appliances that you can store them in there. It should not be an issue. You just don't want them right next to all these heat sources. I have a coat closet over there. Uh, one side is the water heater. And the other side is a coat closet. I'm fixing to turn it into a second pantry for like canned goods that come from the store. The canned foods. Um, in, I'll just show you. <laughs> Cans like this. Okay. This one I use for my salt stuff I take to put on the ice when I go out when it's been gotten icy out there um, so I can get to my car safely. Uh, let's see. As far as length of foods, I have foods in my pantry right now. The oldest ones are dated 2012. That's tomato products. That's some green beans um, and some meats. Now, this past year, I have opened some of those cans to make soups or chicken salad or whatever, and they are perfectly fine. I know what I'm doing. I knew what I was doing back then. I know how to check. When I open an older jar, the first thing I do is smell. Open it up. Does it look okay? 
Does the color look good? Okay. Sniff it. Really good. Okay, get your nose down there and sniff it. If something's off, you're probably going to smell it. Um, as far as I know, botulism is the only bacteria you can't see or smell or taste. And I don't know how well that holds over time. But if there were botulism in a jar that was 10 years old, that lid would have popped off. It would have come loose and popped off. And it does happen over time. I When I moved here, I had one jar. One out of 30 dozen jars that the lid was loose. I don't question it. I dump it out. It goes in the garbage. Okay. If it's liquid, you could flush it down your toilet. If it's not like the tomato puree and it's not liquid, you could use a garbage disposal if you want to. Um, personally, I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to put it in the trash and let it go to the, the uh, local dump. I don't put the jar in. The jar can be put in hot wash water with some bleach in it. Make sure everything's really good and clean. You don't have to put a lot of bleach. You know, like a cap full is good. Okay. Um, it's in, and let them soak for a while. And that makes sure that any bacteria that might have been in it are now dead. Okay. And then you drain your water, put in new wash water, and then rinse it well after you've washed. And you're good to go. Um, I, of course, you throw away the lids. If there's any question at all about it, you throw the lid away. Um, the rings are probably okay. When they start getting that old, they get a little bit, well, those wouldn't have rings on them. But if you have older rings and they're getting really rusty, it's time to go get some new ones. You can buy the boxes of 12 in either size, the regular mouth or the wide mouth. Um, and they come with a lid and a ring. But sometimes you just want to get new rings. If you're buying a new box of jars, it's already going to have those in it. Um, so that that's kind of what keeps me uh, recycled on those. Um, I will say this. A lot of people will say if you have older food, more than five years old, you want to boil it for 10 minutes. I have not done that. I'm still here. If you are more comfortable with boiling it, go for it. Most people say with canned meats, you want, no matter what kind of meat it is, you want to boil it for 10 minutes before you use it or, you know, cook with it. Okay, I could understand that if you're raw packing meat, like chicken and what have you. I don't do that. I cook my meat thoroughly before it goes in the jar and I put it in there with the broth that it made. Mostly I do chicken. I have done beef. I have done ham and pork roast as well. Again, they're all fully cooked. They go in the jar with broth or in the case of ham, sometimes just with water because it can be very salty. Um, I bought a giant uh, ham uh, earlier before Christmas, before Thanksgiving, and it's one of the pre-cooked, so I know it's already cooked, so all I did was chunk it up, put it in jars, and put water in it. I didn't even put broth in it, just water, because it's going to be a little salty, because they're going to sit on the shelf for a while. I use those, you can use them for soups and stuff, or whatever you'd like. I tend to use them when I cook a pot of beans, because I was raised by Southern parents, and we cook beans with either salt pork or ham or bacon. Salt pork's my first favorite. Ham is my second, depending on what kind of bean it is. But if you want to go ahead and, and boil everything, that's perfectly fine. It won't hurt it. Okay, it's already been through over an hour. And meat's already been through an, an hour and a half in the canner. Um, that'll pretty much kill off anything. I've not had any problems with anything. When I open a jar of chicken, as long as it looks okay, feels okay, um, 
smells okay. I might take a little bite of it, uh, just a little bit in my mouth to see as long as it tastes okay, its texture is okay. Um, I just, you know, drain it and make chicken salad. I don't recook it. I mean, it's already been cooked for an hour and a half. And my, all my meats have already been cooked before I put them in the jar. So they're getting two cookings already. They're pre-cooked before they go in the jar. Uh, it's usually about an hour and a half. It's a little longer here in the high altitude. But yeah, it's, you know, it's had such a long cooking time that I don't think there's anything there. If I did get sick, I know how to dial 911 hospitals like four blocks away too bad for me if I did that but I'm never in 30 some odd years that I've been canning have I had any issues um, the only food that I have thrown out has been one where the lids were loose other things I've opened up um, I did throw out some fruit one time because it was all brown and just mush. It just wasn't, you know, wasn't good for anything. So that's the only things that I've thrown out and not been able to use. And like I said, I've got jars of food in there, including meat, from 2012. And they've made a trip from 2012. They made the trip, an eight-hour trip, from one part of Texas to another. We didn't end up using them all. Um, and they've made the trip from North Central Texas to Colorado. And I read up on it before I moved. Change of elevation, once it's already canned, will not affect it. And it hasn't. I haven't lost. I've lost one, which was probably somewhat loose when I packed it when I got here. That was it. That was it. One. One jar. And I think it was tomatoes of some sort. Um, generally, I just do plain stuff because I'll doctor things up depending on what I'm making with it. All those 50 pounds of tomatoes that I bought in September, I made into tomato puree. And I think I already talked about that, so I won't go on about that. Anyway, so please do not be afraid to can, pressure can. It's very easy. As you could, it's a longer process than water bath. You have to be extremely careful, no matter whether you're water bath canning or pressure canning, to keep everything clean. Um, you know, your hands, your equipment, your jars, your lid, everything needs to be clean. You don't want to accidentally trap bacteria in there because, oops, somebody forgot to wash their hands after going to the bathroom. Especially if you're having young ones help you, um, make sure. That's the first thing you do. Wash your hands with soap and warm water. Um, I can't think of anything else I need to tell you. I'm trying to be very, very complete about this. Um, I will say I try to keep my jars upright as much as possible. From when I am taking them out of the canner to sitting you know they sit there for 12 to 24 hours um when they go into the sink they don't go in sideways uh, they're standing up if you use the vinegar you shouldn't have any problem with residue uh, from your water on your jars if you do and you can't get it off wait until you use that jar and then you can let your jar soak in vinegar water the whole thing and it will take it off um I go from here, putting them in the pantry, and I keep them upright. They sit upright on the shelf. I don't stack them. Pint, uh, half pints, I can stack. I don't have a problem doing that. I do not like stacking pints, definitely not quarts or anything on top of a quart. The reason being, the bottom of the jar will fit into the top of lid. Now, this is a wide mouth jar. Okay, you look at the bottom. 
that fits on top of there very nicely. But this is a lot of weight between the glass, the water, and the food itself. It's a lot of weight. Pints on top of pints do not work. They they don't sit well in there. They they let me hold that up so you can see. They the bottom of it doesn't fit there. Okay. So it's just not good to stack them anyway. Now, I have done this when I didn't have enough shelving and I had jars already on the shelf. I would put a layer of cardboard, just cut open a cardboard box, and I could put a layer of cardboard over a bunch of them. And then I could stack a few more on top. I'd try not to do that because I don't think it's good for it. Half pints. The little short ones, like you would put jellies, condiments, that kind of thing in, those are perfectly fine. They don't weigh enough to cause an issue. But And you can put those on top of your pints. You can put them on top of each other. I just don't like doing quart, uh, pints on top of pints and definitely nothing on top of a quart. It's just too much weight. Um, I think that's it. You'll need to look at your pantry cupboard situation. Um, there are very many creative ways you can store your foods. Um, you can, like I'm going to change out the coat closet part. Uh, I have food on, there's a shelf up above and I have canned goods up there. Um, and I bought a couple of uh, used pieces yesterday. One for sure I know I can use. I'm, I have to kind of modify the other one. It, it was a wine cabinet. I don't do wine. You do not want to store your jars sideways. They need to stay upright. Otherwise, you're putting too much pressure on this lid. It could come loose. and You not only have a mess to clean up, you'd lose your food. And it's not a good situation. Um, if you're moving... You could move with canned goods. It's not a problem. You want to wrap your jars with newspaper so they're not clanking against each other. Or what I've done is I raided all the old socks and went to the thrift store and bought socks. because um, they're And it's like, actually, one time I went, they had so many, they said, just take them. We, nobody wants to buy them anyway. You know, ask all your friends. You got socks with holes in them? And what you do is you cut them to where they fit the jar, even if it's just around this part of the jar. You're just keeping them from clanking together. Some people store them on their shelves that way. I don't like to do that. Um, and then put them in a box. You can use any kind of box you want. You only want one layer. The box that I have found the best is one of the... Um, it's the large, is it the large? I think it's, it's either one of the large or the medium priority box. I want to say it's the medium priority box. It will hold one dozen jars. Now, if you have some odd shaped ones or the wide mouth ones, they don't fit as well. If you can put a combination of the wide mouth and the narrow mouth in there, they'll fit much better. But I, I could put... When I moved here with 30 boxes, which I did, do not ship them, um, I know people ship a lot of stuff. I'm not comfortable with that. And if I have a way to get it to where I'm moving to without shipping it, I will. I, I brought them in my car. Um, and I can stack the boxes. So I had 30 boxes of jars of food and 12 in a box. That's 30 dozen. And I taped the boxes. And I put a mix in mine because I knew of where I was going. And I just wanted to have a variety of stuff in each box. It was easier just to open one box because I knew I was going to have to store them in a closet and not on open shelves that I could see. So that's part of the reason I have stuff from 2012 still. <laughs> because they weren't all open where I could organize them. But, you know, I don't want to pull a box open and just take one jar out of it. And then they, they want to move around. And I, no, I didn't want to do that. 
So those boxes work very well. Make sure you do tape them up well to hold. Um, and they're good for moving. You can stack your boxes. I had them in uh, my room along one wall, I, I, about five boxes high. And that's fine because you've got double layers of cardboard plus the boxes are tall enough that these jars, the pint jars fit in there and the box lids up here. So it's not, they're not on the lid. Okay. That's, and I want to say it's the priority medium boxes. When you don't need them, use them for shipping stuff. If you haven't written on them, um, you know, just cut them open and flatten them and offer them on Facebook Marketplace or whatever for free for somebody because they don't cost you anything. If your post office doesn't have them and if you have a lot of jars and cans and what have you, order them online from the post office, uh, USPO, USPS. Um, there's no charge for them. They'll deliver them to your door, however many you need. Um, technically, you're not supposed to use them for anything but priority shipping. But if you're moving, you're not shipping. That's just what I say. And I reuse them. When I do have something to ship, I can pull one of those. I've given some away. Um, if the box got crushed in some manner, you know, moving other stuff around or whatever, um, you know, I may not give that away because it's already got some damage on it. But I tend to reuse or recycle everything like that. I don't put it in the trash. Uh, if you don't have a recycling program, do what you gotta do. You can use extra boxes like that if you take all the tape off of it. You can use them um, to cover your garden or as a layer in your garden to smother out the weeds. You know, there's recycle in your, in your uh, compost bin, if you tear them up kind of smallish, they, they'll break down over a year. Um, so that's what I've always done with anything that I couldn't pass on to somebody else. Can't really take them back to the post office unless they've not been used. And when I moved here, I had a lot of boxes um, because I had been selling some stuff online. I took all of those extras back to the post office so they could restock because they had not been used. Okay, I'm gonna stop this. I've been going on for 42 minutes. I'm sorry, this was supposed to be a short one. Apparently, I don't know how to talk in short spurts. Anyway, I hope this has helped you. Uh, we'll be doing some more stuff soon that I'll film. Um, I've got the potatoes to do, but I'm not going to film those again. It's the same process you've just seen.